So 2023 is my year. I can't speak French. Did I not read too much about it? I did not read too much about it. So the true crime, all the stuff. Hmm, it's funny, it doesn't even say. Flipped a switch in my brain and I was like, I'm do no. And also I love a book about a writer. So happening. And then my final book. Hi everybody, it's Audrey and welcome back to Chapter and Converse and welcome to 23 books that I'm gonna read in 2023. I hope. So I'm not usually one to make a TBR, you guys know, but I also am super inspired to focus on some particular books, which was completely inspired by this month's Book of the Month selections. So before we dive into my books, let's talk a bit about Book of the Month, which I am so excited to be partnering with them again and so grateful that they are sponsoring today's video. Every month, the team at Book of the Month curates a collection of five to seven new release, sometimes early release hardcover books from new and emerging authors, from authors that you know and love across all of the genres, you guys. There is literally something for everyone. And you can get your first book right now for only $9.99 using the code New Year. So you guys, shipping is always free. If for some reason there's a month where like you're just not clicking with one of the selections, you can pass on that month, no questions asked. And it's just like a no brainer. They curate the best collection of books, like I said, all the genres. I've discovered so many new authors through this. I have found some of my favorite authors through Book of the Month, and I'm just really excited about it. So January was a seven book month, you guys, which made it really hard to make a selection, but I managed to pick up two books and I'm excited about both of them. The first one is definitely the inspo for today's video, and that's Hellbent by Lee Bardugo. So... I'm very excited. I know, I know I wasn't going to do it, but I did it. I couldn't, I couldn't resist. I absolutely couldn't resist. So this is book two in the Alex Stern series. Ninth House is the first book in the series. It is an adult fantasy. I feel like we are grounded in reality because she is at Yale. There's secret society. There's some fantastical elements. I love me some dark academia. I'm all in. I'm very, very excited. And then again, always hanging out on the thriller side of town. I am on Thriller Street every day of the week. This is What Lies in the Woods by Kate Alice Marshall. Past and present mysteries. We have a group of friends where something went down in the past, they lied about it, and it's coming back to haunt them in the present. So it says they were 11 when they sent a killer to prison. They were heroes, but they were liars. So I read Rules for Vanishing, which was a YA kind of horror thriller. And this is her first adult thriller, which I'm very excited to get into. I just love me some thrillers, you guys know. So very excited. Thank you again so much to Book of the Month for sponsoring today's video and for partnering with me. And again, you guys, you can get your first book for only $9.99 with the code New Year. Details are all down below. Very excited to share them with you guys. And I'm very excited to talk about the 23 books I'm gonna be reading in 2023. So my mission for the 23 books in 2023 is not like if I don't read them by the end of the year, I have to get rid of it or like bad things are going to happen to me. This is more of books that I have talked about wanting to read many, many times. So some of them will look familiar to you guys and I just haven't done it or books that I bought specifically where I was like, I have to have this. I'm going to read it immediately and I haven't read it yet or some books that have just been on my shelf for a bit that... I want to read. So what I'm trying to do is I'm literally going to put them all together on a shelf, put them in front of my face and dip in and out of them throughout the year. So no timeline, no anything, you know me, I mood read, it's all loose, it's all in good fun here. But I definitely wanted to have some sort of a, you know, I did book to bingo, like I just I had fun having targets for myself. So this is sort of like a target. So this isn't like an official bingo in any kind of way. Still mulling on something for you guys. But this is just me playing a game with myself to read a bunch of books that I want to read. So let's get into it. Okay, since I have 23 books to talk about, I'm going to attempt to keep it a little bit on the minimal side when it comes to descriptions. But inspired by today's book, or the book that inspired today's video, Hellbent by Lee Bardugo, you know we're starting with Ninth House. So how many times have I said I'm going to read this book? And I really want to read it. I feel like I need to be in the mood for it. And I also feel like with this book and with some of the books I want to talk about today, I've overhyped it so much in my head that I've like intimidated myself and like psyched myself out. But this is set at Yale. So it's like kind of like lore by Alexander Bracken where I feel like we are grounded in reality in one sense but then there is like that fantastical element to it and we are following Alex Stern again obviously started here and it's like secret societies 
and I just I've heard such great things about it so I'm very excited for it I'm going to read it it's happening it's happening it's happening mark my words all of these I hope mark my words <laughs> Okay, these are of course in no particular order. So next up I have Friends Like These by Kimberly McCrete. So this is actually a book that I started to read, I wanna say in November, and I had the audiobook of it. So when I was doing NaNoWriMo, I was listening to a lot of audiobooks, but it turns out, well, I actually knew this, this is a book about a group of friends, co-ed group of friends, one of my most favorite things ever. And there's a past and present mystery. They've done something in the past, and I think it's coming to haunt them in the present. So it says everyone has those friends. It doesn't matter how long it's been or how badly they've occasionally behaved or how late it is when that call finally comes. You show up, no questions asked. So this group has reunited in the Catskills and I actually started listening to it and I realized one, I wanna physically read this book because by like three minutes into the book, I was already like trying to bookmark <laughs> the audiobook. And also, it was a little bit too familiar to what I was writing that I didn't want it in my head when I was working like day in day out on my book. So I'm still gonna work on my book this year, but I'm also gonna read this book this year. I just, I really enjoyed it, but it just like was not the right time for me. So that's happening. And then another book that I swore I was gonna read, again, Rachel by Marion Keys. This is the sequel to Rachel's Holiday. This came out in 2022. I reread Rachel's Holiday with the specific intent of going into this book, and then I didn't do it. Don't ask me why, I probably just wasn't in the mood. So my bookmark is literally on page one of this, which is where I put it, and then I never actually read the book. So I'm excited to read more Marion Keys. I definitely wanna make her a priority in 2023, and I'm gonna start with this one. Okay, another book that I promise I'm gonna read this winter is The Snowman by Joe Nesbo. So this is, I think, book seven in the Harry Hole series, but I don't care that I'm gonna start somewhere in the middle. I've heard great things about this. This is definitely like an Abby from Crime by the Book must read. And this one is all the spook creep factor to it. So we have a serial killer who leaves snowmen on the front lawn. <laughs> it's like his calling card and it's not funny. It's a thousand percent creepy. So I believe the serial killer strikes on the first snowfall. So Harry Hole believes that there is a connection between the missing women and a suspicious letter that he's received. So we have women who've been going missing for years and he looks into it and it's perfect for winter and I am overdue on getting into Joe Nesbo. I have yet to read any of his books despite owning a few. So I'm starting with the one that I hear is like the one to start with. The next book I have is another, had to have it, had to read it, didn't read it. It's All Good People Here by Ashley Flowers. So she is the woman behind the Crime Junkie podcast. And this book is a past and present timeline. We have a girl in the past who was murdered. And our main character, Margot, was from that town. She was six at the time. And they were, she was actually next door neighbors with the girl who was killed. And then we fast forward 20 years, Margot winds up coming home for whatever reason, doesn't matter. <laughs> like to return home maybe she's a big city journalist and i think things start to happen in the present and she starts to look into things from the past yes there's a girl in the present who has also gone missing so you guys know i love past and present timelines i love reluctant return home i love a true crime vibe to it i've heard really good things about this book and i did see i will say some of these books are also inspired by people's best of the year list which i was like Ugh, i totally want to read that so this was one of those books that i saw pop up on a lot of best of lists so I'm gonna read it. And then to prep for another sequel that's coming out, <laughs> this time I really mean to read it, is You Love Me by Carolyn Kempness. So this is book number three in the You, Joe Goldberg series. So I read You, I read Hidden Bodies. I was late to the party, so I read it when I found out about the TV show when it came out on Lifetime. I wound up reading the books, watching the show. Long story short, I picked up book number three, but I wound up not reading it, but book number four is coming out this spring. And is it weird to say I miss Joe Goldberg? I think because for one, Penn Bagley has been so funny on Instagram and his reels have totally cracked me up. And then I started to do a rewatch of the original Gossip Girl, not in like an intentional, like hunkering down, trying to get through it, but I started to watch the new Gossip Girl which I didn't totally love, but it made me nostalgic for the old Gossip Girl. So I watched a little bit of that. So I feel like I'm in like a Pen, Pen Bagley 
missing him, which makes me miss Joe Goldberg. So I'm curious to see what he gets up to next. <laughs> I'm sure it's nothing good. So I'm excited for it. And then the second book from a debut author who was one of my favorites from 2021 is Amanda J. Atisa. This is her book, You're Invited, which came out in 2022. This is a destination wedding in Sri Lanka. It's like a multi-day extravaganza kind of a wedding. And it says, what could be worse than your ex-boyfriend marrying your childhood best friend? Getting accused of her murder. So I'm pretty sure the bride gets murdered over the wedding weekend and that can't and well for a lot of people. So her first book, My Sweet Girl, was absolutely amazing. I loved her main character in that. I loved sort of the snark and the deliciousness and the dark and messed up -ness of it all. So I have high hopes for this one as well. I've also heard great things about it. I have zero excuses, you guys can imagine, for not reading any of these books. I always am just gonna blame it on my mood, but another one again that I've seen pop up on people's best of the year list, and I'm like, darn it, I have that. Why have I not read it yet? So 2023 is my year. Another book that <laughs> I've shown in multiple videos. And I own multiple in the series and I haven't even started the series yet. No judgment, no judgment, no judgment. It's The Tenant by Katrine Engberg. So this is the first in, the fourth book is coming out in the spring. I don't know if it's the final book in the series, but another book in the series is coming out. This is book number one. I haven't even started it yet. And we have two police detectives struggling to solve a shocking murder and stop a killer hellbent on revenge. So gorgeous map. Love me a map. You guys know I love a map. This takes place in Copenhagen. So in this book we have a strange link between fiction and real life. I love a book about a writer. So our landlady Esther is a writer and in her book this woman named Julie who is one of her tenants winds up dead and in real life Julie winds up dead. So I have heard this series gets better as it goes on but you have to start at the beginning. <laughs> I say this as I'm like, I'm going to start this in the middle, but I want to start this at the beginning. And also I love a book about a writer. So happening, another book about writing, Ellie Griffith's The Stranger Diaries. So another series that I have three books in, another case of no judgment. It's all fine. We're all friends here. So this I believe is kind of a more meta book. So it says death lies between the lines when the events of a dark story start coming true. So this is pitched as modern Gothic mystery. I think there's some dark academia vibes to it. Our main character, Claire, is an English teacher and she specializes in this Gothic writer, R.M. Holland, and teaches a course on him every year. So it says Claire's colleague and close friend is found dead with a line from R.M. Holland's most famous story, The Stranger, left by her body. And Claire is horrified to see her own life collide with the storylines of her favorite literature. So I believe this series, the detective in the series, is the link through all of the books, not Claire as our main character. But either way, I'm very excited about it. I just got Bleeding Heart Yard, which is her new one, which also has like a dark academia, past and present timelines, bad things these girls did in the 90s when they were in school come back to haunt them. So I really, really want to read that, but I do want to honor these books and read them in order because I believe the trajectory of the detective is important in order in this series. So anyway, I'm also very intrigued by this one. So again, books about writers, always gonna be a buzzword for me. And then a writer that I love. I want to read his first book. It's Death Notice by Todd Ritter, AKA Riley Sager. So I got this at the end of 2021. I was on a thrifted online <laughs> psychotic search to find his three original books, which I did. And then I didn't read them of course I didn't. So in these books, this is actually a three book series that follows a police chief called Cat Campbell, called Cat Campbell, that's her name. These are set in Pennsylvania and this is one of those sleepy towns where like there's never been a murder. So it says, this one's a shocker. George Winnick, a farmer in his 60s, is found in a homemade coffin on the side of the highway with his lips sewn shut and his veins and arteries drained of blood and filled with embalming fluid. Yep. So it says, chilling as that all is, it becomes even more so when Kat finds that the Perry Hollow Gazette, which is the town, the obituary writer Henry Gall received a death notice for Winnick before he was killed. Hence the name of the book. So I'm just really curious to see kind of where Riley Sager began, so to speak, and just to read his earlier books. And you know I always love me a police investigation, so I have all three of them. I'm going to start there. 
and give it a go. And then this is like working very kismity in some ways, I feel like, which <laughs> I didn't even mean to say that, but that's a book. <laughs> but Police Detective. So Tana French, Faithful Place. This is book number three. So if you guys have followed me, you know I read In the Woods and the Likeness last year, and I really, really enjoyed it. I read In the Woods ages ago and just never continued with the series, but this is her Dublin Murder Squad series, and each book features a different detective from the squad as sort of our spotlight character. So in this book, we are following Frank Mackey, and he shows up in the likeness as the former boss, I guess I would say, for Cassie Maddox when she used to work in Undercover. So full disclosure, I did not read the back of this until I sat down today because I didn't want to risk anything being spoiled from previous books, but there's nothing spoiled from previous books in this. So we have kind of a dual timeline with Frank. So in 1985, he was a 19 year old kid with a dream and he wanted to escape his family's flat on Faithful Place and run away to London with his girl, Rosie Daly. But the night they were supposed to leave, Rosie was a no show. So 22 years later, Rosie's suitcase shows up behind a fireplace in a derelict house on Faithful Place. And Frank, now a detective in the Dublin undercover squad, is going home whether he likes it or not. So, reluctant return home, dual timelines, police investigation. I expect some really solid character work in this. Tana French just writes a beautiful novel. I really enjoyed Frank in the likeness. He's definitely... I feel like he's an acquired taste, but I acquired a taste for Frank. So I'm very curious to see his origin story, so to speak, and then kind of see where this book goes. So very excited for that. And since I already flashed you guys Kismet, this is by Amina Akhtar, and this is her second book, I wanna say. So I do have Fashion Victim, which I haven't read yet, but I had heard such great things about this book, particularly from my girl, Jennifer Hillier, and then I also heard about it from Kate on Killing the Tea, the podcast she does with Gare from Gare Indeed Reads, and she was raving about it as well. So this one is Yoga, Smoothies, and Murder. So we have someone who goes to one of those retreats in Sedona, and it's going to be healing, and it's going to be transcendent hikes and epic juice cleanses, um, but then people start turning up gruesomely murdered. Yes, please. And it says, all is not well in the wellness town. So yes, <laughs> give me all the wellness gurus getting murdered. <laughs> I think there's a lot of dark and messed up in this in here. And again, anything that Jennifer Hillier, I'm here for, I'm totally here for. So another one, Tessa Weger, The Dead Season. I have a lot of series books here, I'll be honest, you guys. This is actually book two in a series, so not too far in. I have talked about wanting to read this multiple times. This is her Shana Merchant series. So Death in the Family was the first book. Shana is a former NYPD detective. That was a NYPD detective. I have a hard time saying that, apparently. So she winds up moving to upstate New York with her fiance. Some stuff went down when she was with the NYPD. So the first book is an isolated thriller. We are, there's a lot of weather impact to that. I very much enjoyed it. And now we get some more Shana here. So in this one, we get another reluctant return home. Shana's estranged uncle's body is found, his skeleton. And I guess he's been missing for quite a bit. So she has to go back to Vermont to deal with that. So love me some Shayna, love me some Tessa Wiegert. I also got the third book in the series for Christmas, so need to get on it. And then another series, this is a starter in a series. This is Sharon Bolton, The Craftsman. So I talked about her book, The Pact, was one of my favorite books of 2022. It's the first of her books that I've read despite having multiples. But I also picked up her sequel to this, The Buried. <laughs> because I'm a mess. So in this book, we are following a police detective named Florence Lovelady, and her career was made when she solved the mystery of a bunch of child murders. They were being buried alive. Ugh. She got a confession out of this guy, Larry, and he spent the rest of his life in prison. But now, decades later, he is dead and events from the past are starting to repeat themselves. So do we have a copycat? Did she get the wrong guy? And it says, when her own son goes missing under similar circumstances, the case not only gets reopened, it gets personal. So my understanding, if that little synopsis wasn't enough for you guys, is that this one gets pretty dark. So, of course, I'm intrigued. A police detective. I'm telling you, that Patricia Cornwell reread series really flipped my switch on police detectives. And I'm not mad about it at all. Okay, a couple more 2022 releases that I had to have. 
The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley. I am a big fan of Lucy Foley. I loved The Hunting Party so much. I just loved that dark and messed up group of friends. The, just the whole dynamic of that entire book, I absolutely loved. And I definitely enjoyed the guest list. I did feel like it was a little bit, I read them like nearly back to back, a little bit of a familiar storyline where you get like another isolated vibe to it. But the Paris apartment is intriguing to me. So I think we do get an isolation vibe in the sense that everybody lives in this Paris apartment building, but they're not locked into the isolated space. Okay, so one thing I will say that I enjoy about a UK cover of a book is their description is a little bit, I feel like sometimes a lot more vague than a US one, which I'm totally good with. So this one, we have a beautiful old apartment block where nothing goes unseen and everyone has a story to unlock. A watchful concierge, a scorned lover, the prying journalist, the naive student, the unwanted guest. There was a murder here last night. A mystery lies behind the door of apartment three. Who holds the key? And this is one of those books where uh, the naked cover is beautiful. And I'm very excited for this book. So I love me some Lucy Foley. I really, really do. And I'm excited to give this one a go again. Naked cover on fire with a bit of Paris in the background. So I was going to say, did I say this takes place in Paris? It's called the Paris apartment. Girl. <laughs> And I am going to follow Alex Michaelides advice on this one. So it says short of a trip to Paris, the next best thing is to settle down with a bottle of French wine and devour the Paris apartment. Done. Alex in. It's a deal. And then the other 2022 release by one of my most favorite authors that I did not read yet is The It Girl by Ruth Ware. More dark academia. I have read all of her books. I'm a huge fan of her writing. I am excited for this one. Again, Past and Present Mysteries, The Messed Up Friend Group. So in this one, we have Hannah who found April's body 10 years ago. It was Hannah who didn't question what she saw that day. Did her testimony put an innocent man in prison? She needs to know the truth even if it means questioning her own friends, even if it means putting her own life at risk. Because if the killer wasn't a stranger, could it be someone she knows? So I'm very excited for this one as well. Expecting delicious darkness and messed up friend groups and all things that I love. Amazing. Okay, a book that I've had on my list multiple times and I was going to read during my own book Trevor Bingo, but I wound up going in a different direction, but it's Bloodline by Jess Lowry. So this one takes place, I wanna say in the 70s or 80s. I'm probably totally saying that wrong, but this is a small town, starts Minnesota 1968. Small town murder, I think it's hugely messed up. I also think it's inspired by actual events. So let's keep all that creep going. Yes, it says a tale inspired by true events. <laughs> Pregnant journalist Joan Harkin is cautiously excited to follow her fiance back to his Minnesota hometown. After spending a childhood on the move and chasing the screams and swirls of news rich city life, she's eager to settle down. Lilydale's motto, quote, come home forever, couldn't be more inviting. And yet something is off in this picture perfect village. So her fiance tells her she's being paranoid. It says he might be right. Then again, she might have moved to the deadliest small town on earth. This is another Abbey Crime by the Book five-star endorsement. So we're going in. And then another book inspired by the Kill the Tea podcast that I have been meaning to read, have not found an excuse to pick up, not that I need an excuse, but The Woman Inside by E.G. Scott. This is like Gare's go-to, always talks about it like favorite book ever. And I want to know what it's all about. So it says marriage is the most dangerous game. I feel like I have read about this book so many times, but I just haven't obviously picked it up despite it collecting some dust on my shelf. So it says Rebecca knows that she is not built for marriage. She doubts whether love is even possible for someone like her. That is until she meets Paul, a successful charismatic married man with damage of his own. They are each other's perfect and perhaps only match. But 20 years later, Paul and Rebecca are hardly living happily ever after. Everything from their dog to their picket fence mocks the bliss they had imagined, and every day they balance more precariously on a growing mountain of lies. So we get some stalking, it sounds like. It says a stylish game of cat and mouse, and I don't want to read too much more. I'm very excited. Gare and I have a lot of books in common that we like, so I trust him very much. So I'm gonna be reading that. Then we have The Butcher and the Wren, which I picked up because Lindsay 
from Lindsay's Little Library was talking about it. So I like low-key had it on my radar, but I was like, hmm, I'll see. And then Lindsay read it and really enjoyed it. So I was like, hmm, I'll get it. <laughs> so this is written by Elena Urquhart, and she is the co-host of the Morbid True Crime Podcast. So another serial killer vibe. It says something dark is lurking in the Louisiana Bayou. So I don't really want to know too much more about this one, but I've heard really good things about it. It's very tiny. I could definitely probably find a different bottle of wine <laughs> to drink and read this one. It's going to be great. Okay, another sequel I was going to read last year and I didn't get to, and it's Lisa Jewell's The Family Upstairs, or I'm sorry, The Family Remains. So The Family Upstairs is the first book which I read because this was coming out and I was going to boom right into it. And then I didn't because my direction like boomed someplace else. So this is the continuation of that story. We get, I think some of the characters from the family upstairs come into this book and then we get some new characters. And this one has more of a police investigation twist to it, which I'm really excited to see. So the family upstairs definitely concluded and I was satisfied with the conclusion, but there were definitely like a few windows cracked that could be picked up as like a new thread of a story. So I'm excited to see what happens when those windows open. So we have, like I said, police investigation, and then we have some hearkening back to what happened 30 years ago. So I definitely would say you have to read The Family Upstairs first, not having read this, but I feel like it's gonna make more sense because of what happens in that book but it was a really good book but I've heard a lot of people say they liked this one even more so I'm very excited for that and I do love me some Lisa Jewell you guys know I've been reading her for ages so I'm gonna keep reading her okay Hidden Pictures by Jason Reculak this is one of those books that I feel like people either were like all in or were like get out so I saw this on a lot of people's lists at year end for better or for worse but I am hoping it's gonna be for better for me I am really excited about this one so I showed you guys this when I hauled it and there's like the funniest picture of like a little kid on a bunny but I guess this kid's drawings they get like it just seems like oh bunny I have a thing for bunnies um, but I believe the pictures get more disturbing as more messed up things start going on in the book and we have his nanny who was involved in it I hope no harm comes to a bunny in this book I really really do that's gonna make me sad I know people have a dog thing in books I'm gonna have a bunny thing in books which actually I read a book not too long ago and a bunny did not make it out alive and I was really upset about that, but sidebar. So, yep, Teddy is the kid, his artwork becomes more sinister and his stick figures evolve into more complex, lifelike sketches well beyond the ability of any five-year-old. So Mallory is his nanny and it just sounds completely messed up and I don't wanna to read too much about it. So stay tuned for my thoughts and feelings on that. And then a book that I also was so excited about, I got this with my Penguin Rewards points, is Look Closer by David Ellis. So this is another one where I feel like people either loved it or didn't. I am gonna put my, put my eggs in the love it basket. This takes place in Chicago, and I am excited to see what it's all about. <laughs> did I not read too much about it? I did not read too much about it. So in this one, we are following a couple, Simon and Vicky. They are super wealthy and they have a stable, if unexciting marriage. And it says, but with these two, absolutely nothing is what it seems. So then we have a beautiful socialite found hanging in a mansion in a nearby suburb. And then it sounds like a web of secrets and lies starts to unravel. So I'm totally here for it. I'm totally here for it. I have not read anything by David Ellis. Is this his first? No, he wrote 10 novels of crime fiction. He's an Edgar Award winning author, <laughs> not his debut, but it is going to be my first David Ellis book. So stay tuned again for that one. I don't know why Chicago excites me. I used to work for a company that was based there. So we used to get to go there and I really enjoyed it. Um, and for like a hot minute, I like debated living there too, but again, story for other days. And then the last book I'm gonna read, this is definitely an out of my comfort zone, but I also, there's a part of me that's convinced I will love this author if I give him another try. And it's The Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix. So you guys know, if you've been here for a long time, I tried to read The Southern Book Club's Guide to Vampires and I enjoyed it, but I couldn't, I couldn't with the body horror and I had to stop. So I was enjoying the humor, I was enjoying the writing, 
I have listened to so many interviews with Grady Hendrix. Like I genuinely enjoy him as a writer and as a human. Like I love his humor, but I just had a really hard time with that book. So you guys know I'm a diehard Riley Sager fan. You guys know Final Girls is my favorite book of his, which is not me indicating this is the same as that, but I love a Final Girl trope. So I want to read <laughs> this book. <laughs> But I feel like this could be a good one for me. And then I also have the e-arc of How to Sell a Haunted House. So thank you very much, Berkeley. And I feel like Final Girls and Haunted Houses are maybe safer territory than Vampire Book Clubs. <laughs> so I'm gonna give him a go. But I really, like I want to love his writing because again, I really enjoy his humor and I love the concepts of his books, like My Best Friend's Exorcism, like I definitely want to like gear up for that. So I know he does some body horror. I know he doesn't shy away from it, but I also think reading it might be different than hearing it. So I don't know, we'll see. But I did pick this up obviously, and I'm gonna give it a go. I'm gonna give it a go. So I'm gonna put on my big girl horror pants and read me some Grady Hendrix. So I'm very excited and I will keep you guys posted on how that one goes. So those are my 23 books that I'm gonna focus on this year. Let me know if you guys have any recommendations. I mean, again, I'm so moody, but every time you guys talk about a book and say great things about a book, it like gears me up even more to wanna read a certain book. So let me know thoughts, feelings, all that fun stuff. And also definitely check out the book of the month details down below. Again, you can get your first book for only $9.99 using the code new year. All the deets are down below. And thank you again so much to book of the month for sponsoring, for partnering with me. I'm just so grateful. And I'm so happy to be able to share all that information with you guys as well. So thank you guys so much for watching today and being here. And I hope everyone's doing well and 2023 is going fantastically for everybody so far. And I will see you guys in another video really soon. Take care, everybody. Bye.